Yeah, and we also have a good vantage point of this fire. It's been interesting to watch this fire's behavior this morning. When we first got here before sunrise. We could see an orange line of flames where you see that white smoke. Uh, as we progressed over the last two hours, it kind of dissipated. It became whiffs of smoke. But if you look towards the uh, ridge top there, you could see the smoke getting a little bit heavier at this moment. The latest numbers, well, let's contrast this scene and yesterday's picture, which as you can see how this fire was burning intensely and by the nighttime it was 300 acres. This morning officially it is listed as 350 acres, only 5% containment this morning. Now, close to where this fire was burning was the Sally and Tom Shubb family. They stopped by here uh, moments ago wanting an update because they allowed uh, Case Area 3's Natalie Brunel to uh, be at their back patio at their evacuated pro uh, property to monitor this fire last night. They wanted to know how their house was doing at this point. There are no reported structures damaged. That a relief, but she admits still a little shaky this morning. Listen. They're really hardworking people and they were stationed at our home yesterday along with KCRA. So we know that it's still there hopefully, and uh, we just want everybody to come back from this okay. Now back out here live, one of the good things here is it is crystal clear blue sky uh, here, so that means that the aerial attack on this fire should be able to resume this morning, which is key because as we're told by firefighters, the only real access to really fight this fire actively is from the air. It is so difficult to try and get to on the ground. Also, the containment box around this fire right now, we're told, is huge. So uh, they are anticipating possibly some potential fire growth here this morning. But at this point, no new evacuations since yesterday and the advisory evacuation order that remains in effect, but has not changed to anything more serious. So we are awaiting uh, word uh, update on what they're expecting as far as the firefight today. But we are expecting to start hearing the sounds of those tankers and possibly helicopters here a little later this morning. Live in Forest Hill. As a matter of fact, if we can right now, Daniel Berlant from Cal Fire, I just saw walking up here. So if we can hold for one second, Daniel, let me just ask you as far as what you can say fire behavior looking forward to today. What's kind of the anticipation of what people should expect going through today? With continued triple digit temperatures and even maybe some gusty winds, there's a lot of potential for this fire to continue to grow. Now we did have some growth overnight, so this fire has now grown to 350 acres. The good news is uh, most of it has really stayed within the retardant lines that we dropped really heavily yesterday afternoon uh, just because it was so difficult to access. It's going to continue to take a lot of work to get crews down there today. One of the big questions we keep hearing is how close is it to any real homes or structures? I know firefighters were actually at structures last night. Any reports of the fire actually getting any closer to the home? Well, the fire has grown somewhat on the Placer County side. Most of the fire growth has really been on the El Dorado County side. So probably the distance from the fire to where the homes are in Todd Valley is at least two miles. So we do have a good distance, but we wanted to make sure those evacuations were in place and those residents were out overnight so that if the fire did start to grow and did move them, we already had them in safe place. But no structures damaged at this point that you're aware of? No structures damaged or destroyed at this point. Again, most of the fire is in a pretty remote area of the Middle Fork of the American River. And the last question is we're starting to get into an active uh, fire season now here around California, knowing this was a fire that broke out pretty quickly and had to try and get resources here. What, what's the level of resource we have? Are we comfortable where we are being able to fight this fire? It's been a challenging couple of weeks for us. Right now we have uh, about 10 uh, major fires across California, this being one of them, over 5,000 firefighters. We're not yet at our capacity or anywhere close right. to where we've been when we had major fires uh, around the state. Uh, but it's a good reminder that, you know, despite the rain, conditions are dry. We need the public's help uh, to prevent these type of fires uh, because we are definitely a very busy already this year and likely going to start seeing the air attack. Yeah, we'll have the aircraft uh, much earlier than normal uh, today just because this fire is so hard to get. We're going to drop with everything we've got from the air like we did last night. And that's the best way to attack this? That's going to be the best way is really make sure those retardant lines are dropped. Crews are hiking in there and they've been hiking in all night long and we've been bringing in even more resources to do structure protection in case, again, this fire does come. But luckily, most of the growth has been on the El Dorado County side at this point. Which is the more rural side. Which is the more rural side. Now, there are homes and we don't want it to go <laughs> further towards Georgetown, of course. Uh, but right now where it's burning, uh, it is burning into the national forces. So we are in unified command with the U.S. Forest Service. Thanks for the hustle this morning, Daniel Thanks. Berlant. Thanks again. I'm going to send it back to you guys for more on uh, 
just uh, what the rest of the day has to hold news-wise. Live in Forest Hill, Mike Tassel, KCRA 3 News. It should be interesting. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate it. 706, here's a list now of the evacuations. Mandatory orders are in place now for Oakwood Court, Vinewood Court, Trailhead Court, Green Pine Court. Evacuation advisories are in place for Whitetail Court, Alton Trail, Gray Court, and Tevis Court. Also, Nugget Drive and Oakwood Lane are closed to traffic.